If I had a bell, I'd ring it in the morning, ring it in the evening, all over this world. I bring out a warning, I bring on danger, I bring up love between the brothers and the sisters all over this world. So today I was uh, rooting around and um, this came out of a box uh, and my wife thought maybe when we found this that maybe it was a piece of concrete. Now, I've cleaned it up a little bit, but I haven't done anything else to it. It's uh, basically the way we got it out of the ground. And it's got this, like, gold paint on the bottom. What do you think? Concrete, maybe? You know, if I had an employee that made concrete with that many rocks in it, I'd fire his ass. Because uh, it would fall apart. Hmm. It would fall apart. The the um, what we have here actually is a uh, crystal of AUPT with a lot of platinum in it, and that's the silvery stuff that you see here on the surface. And the gold stuff is kind of in between it, if you look. And then there's black things that are blue. Look at that blue that are diamonds. That's a nice one. Red diamonds. Um, and there's some uh, silicon carbide. That's what this probably is, and this orange stuff. Black stuff, I don't know. It looks like platinum. And that's because it's missing a neutron, so it's uh, absorbing energy rather than um, reflecting energy but you can polish it up and it um, it gets pretty shiny it gets silvery shiny in fact uh, very special looking um, anyway this is uh, actually a crystal with the, that this stuff, AUPT, forms at 1768 degrees Celsius as the, the molten rock is cooling. And so what happens is the, the first thing that cools, that precipitates out, is carbon. Uh, at 3800 degrees Celsius, and then um, that cools the mix a little further and it begins pulling silicon out when silicon reaches its the uh, below the vapor point um, so it can start being solid inside the uh, crystal lattice of the, uh, the the carbon and they share a double double covalent bond just like uh, carbon crystals do with, in diamonds um, and diamonds are, are have got their name because they're diamond shaped. <laughs> About that, and that's what that is. That's that's a kind of a nice one. Very reflective diamonds. Very reflective. And blue sometimes. Yeah, there it is. Look at that. Isn't that something, huh? Gee, wow, man. So anyway, the the carbon and silicon carbide f form first, uh, and they're floating up in the in the molten rock um, because they're so light. They they and they just float in the in the molten rock, and then w when it reaches below two thousand degrees Celsius. It begins precipitating the uh, the platinum first, and so we have pure platinum crystals here. That's what these clear white kind of the pearly colored things are, and that pearly color is because of the platinum metal, and and it has 
double, double covalent bonds because it didn't cool rapidly. It cooled very, very slowly. Now, this stuff can be ground up and melted. Right? AUPT is really tough to melt. Um, it, it melts at 1768, I think, but I had to use a, a, a plasma torch to melt it. Um, uh, and I have a, a furnace out there that's supposedly capable of 2,000 degrees Celsius, so I should be able to melt the dust. But I don't know, I haven't tried it yet. All I've ever done it with is a plasma torch. Um, and, you know, you could take a plasma torch to this and it won't melt. It won't melt because uh, um, it's a superconductor for heat. Um, and the, the heat just wicks right through it. It doesn't heat up, it doesn't war get warm. You can hold it in your hand and drill it cut it, drill hole saw things through it with diamond hole saws and, and it doesn't get hot and you don't even have to use water. Just doesn't get hot. Doesn't expand when it gets hot. Has zero heat expansion coefficient because it wicks away that heat. So I can machine this like steel, like metal, because it is, except it's much, much stronger because it has double-double covalent bonds like diamond. And it's 10 on the Mohs scale of hardness. Um, this is a, a piece of silicon carbide. got some smaller diamonds in it, but it's silicon carbide. It's also got a nice short tip. And I'll try to uh, find a place where, well, hmm, you know, I, I want to get a place where there's uh, um, raw, raw bare metal, and I'm probably going to have to create one. Like right in there, maybe. And I'll get a nice flat place so that we can uh, look at it and see what it does when I uh, when I do my hardness test. And we'll do it with a couple of things and do it the other way too, and scratch things with this um, because uh, it's revealing um, the hardness of a mineral is the way that geologists and chemists tell one from the other. Something can look like one thing, but if it has different properties, it's not the same thing, it's something different. Okay, so this looks like a shiny brown rock. And most people would absolutely ignore it because uh, it's just a little brown rock. Um, but it's got pretty interesting properties because I can take that little magnet. See that little magnet there? Okay, oops. Take that off of there. And this could come over here like this. And, um, <laughs> whoops. Okay. There's something. Uh, there's another something. Okay, come on out of there. All right. Man, I love these things. Hmm. <coughs> Didn't pick it up. 
All right, I gotta pull out the big guns. Hang on. So, okay. Now we got the big guns out and we got a string attached to it and everything. Uh, whoa, and the magnet wants to go back. And now we have a magnet floating on the bottom. And it, it just kind of sits there, kind of, mostly. Moves around a little. It's not firmly attached. Because it just doesn't want to fall. That's the. It's diamagnetic. And this material passes that magnetism straight through. It, it, you know, I can't do it with a little tiny magnet, but I can do it with a pretty good sized magnet. This is a real strong magnet. They said 350 pounds on this one. It's not. <laughs> it's. It's pretty heavy, though, and uh, you could hurt yourself with it, so. Look at that go, huh? Isn't that neat? I think that's neat, man. Because floating magnets are a sure sign of um, a room temperature superconductor. That's what they do. Just plain old broken magnets. They they shatter real easy. They're kind of ceramic rather than metal. Um, and these little square ones are really a trip because you never know which way they go. They kind of look the same in all directions. That's that's the thing about cubic. That's what cubic means. It's the same in all directions, like our universe. All the properties we have here on planet Earth, it's the same in all directions. And cubic can also be hexagonal in face-centered cubic hexagonal symmetry. Count the sides. Up by my fingers where the, where the line points, one, two, three, four, Anyway, there's six, if you count them. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because I'm looking at it 90 degrees out of phase. So it looks like a cube in one direction. It looks like a hexagon in the other. And... It's a uh, that's what this uh, this piece of concrete looking stuff actually is. It's um, kind of cubic, uh, sort of cubic, hexagonal, um, or maybe something else. I don't know. Maybe it's a um, 3D hologram, if you get those eyes matched up, looking in the right direction, and there's some guy looking, and I think he's saying, I love you. See? Isn't that cool? friend of mine, one eye, goofy smile. Not a guy in the sky that you can't see. He's a guy that puts his pants on one leg at a time, says he likes to cook. And doesn't like to uh, take your stuff. He likes to uh, keep one eye on you to make sure we're safe and nobody else is taking our stuff. He's a nice guy. 
I like them a lot. That's why he's my friend. Because he's... He's the emperor of known space. He's on our side, ladies and gentlemen. Peace.